we're back in Call the Wild the Angler yet again, and today we're going to take a look at how to catch the legendary pike here on Norway. Now, I can't say the full name correctly, so we're going to call him Paul the Dominator for today. He is a gigantic northern pike, which of course has bait and lore preferences of swim baits, jerk baits, and spinner baits. That means we can run with a bait casting setup, and that's just going to allow us to use a little bit heavier equipment. So, we're running with the 110 pound strength rod, we have the visionary director reel, 55 pound braid, and we're going to try the 2 watt size jerkbait. Jerkbaits are one of my favorite lures in real life, and I just thought it'd be appropriate to use it here. And just quickly, because the game did just come out on console, I know it might be tough to already have the setup that we're using today. So I was looking through the different bait casting rods, and I would probably try to get at least this rod with the max line strength of 28.66 pounds. It would be a much tougher fight running with that, but I think that coupled with the 27.5 pound braid probably can land him. If you're going with that though, just know it's going to be a tough fight. Now for the most important part, the location. Paul the Dominator has been being caught down here at this kind of south center lake on the map, just on the southern side of where the creek runs into the lake. So we're going to move down here. The nice thing is, it seems like a lot of people are catching him from the shore. So that can be really useful as far as where we actually sit. The one negative is, it's still pretty early morning. It is about 3 a.m., so kind of dark still. If we can't see him surfacing in the dark, maybe when it gets light enough, we'll see him. And in the meantime, we'll probably just kind of cast out here and see if we can hook him. One final thing, I did want to mention this as well. When you're targeting any legendary, check your challenges. We have one like this to catch 110 pounds worth of fish. Paul the Dominator is huge. It will do about two thirds of this if we can land him. We might as well have it active. Was that him right there? That is him right there. He's in like the shallowest area. Okay, so he definitely spooked. There was a particular animation for spooked fish. I'm just gonna cast out here and see if he'll maybe swing through and get this. I don't think it matters how close to us we actually hook him. He's going for that too. Look at the size of him. He is huge. He's gonna hit that jerk bait. Listen to that drag. Yeah, we're not gonna just pull him right in. So what we're gonna do is just keep tension. I'm not gonna bring the drag up too much, maybe 50%, and we're just gonna let him run for now. Yeah, that's even more than we want. With braid, there's no stretch in that line, so you gotta be really careful about getting really high tension. I think we're just gonna stick with this. He might be having a hard time getting out to deeper water. I think he's gonna get there. But we're just gonna keep tension, keep tension on the rod, and let him run. Basically, this is the way to land any legendary fish. They're going to take off, they're going to pull your line way out. The more tension you have without going too high and potentially risking it snapping, the better. Wearing fish out is done via tension on the line. This is what we need to do. And you can kind of see, as we've just given him time, we're starting to pull him in a little bit, keeping tension on the rod. I can promise you, we're not going to land him even if we get him into like 10 feet now. Eventually he'll spot us and he'll just take off again and probably go even farther than he is at the moment. But right now, we are actually slowly but surely moving him this way. Now this particular spot we're sitting is tough. Just the way the camera is, it's hard to see what the tension on our rod looks like. This is kind of working, but it blocks our entire view of the fish itself. So just gonna keep on kind of doing this, switching sides when he does start to pull line. And we've got him into 50 feet already, but like I said, I'm thinking he gets to 20 or 30, sees us, and this starts all over again. There he is, though, and that might be it right there. He may have spotted us. I want to get a look at him in the water. Let's pull him a little bit this way just to get to see him. He's at 20 feet. Look at him. He is huge. I think, yeah, he's trying to get away. He's in such a shallow area right now. He's having a hard time with it. He is kind of succeeding despite that. He's having a tough time really getting out there. I think he's maybe finally got beyond that really shallow stuff, but we're kind of able to hold him back from getting too far. And again, tension on the rod, tension on the line is how we fight this fish and get him in potentially a little bit sooner than otherwise. And you can see where lighter tackle could do this because at least if he's in this area, there's not a lot of places he can run and just basically take all the line off your spool. Even with really low drag and a lot of patience and tension, you can 100% do this. So just up in the drag a little bit more, you'll notice we don't go quite as high on like 35% now. So if we can bring it up to 45%, 
and start to kind of bring him in. We can see him sitting underneath that vegetation there. Under 40 feet. I still don't think he's ready to give up. He's just in a really weird spot that allows us to keep him pretty close. And I think eventually we might be able to wear him down and bring him in just a little extra quickly. We got him into 35 feet, just keeping a lot of tension on the rod itself. 25 feet. Are we going to be able to land him? He's under 20 now. Just going to keep doing this. I'm not going to move anything. Just keep the tension where it is. It's not too high that there's a risk of snapping. Bring this up a little bit. Look at the size of that guy. I think we have him. Going to pump this up a little bit. <laughs> that is insane. How long was that? Seven minutes. Not bad. A 65 pound pike in seven minutes. And you can totally see where lighter tackle could do that too. I'll explain a little bit why that can work, especially in an area like this. But first, oh, this is not bad. Considering, like, it's basically nighttime, the lighting here is good. Like, I can live with that for our screenshots. I was thinking about just sitting here forever and waiting till daylight, but I think this is solid. Pretty cool mark. You see, you can see some of the scarring, like down the head and back. I thought there was a scar somewhere too, I noticed as we were bringing him in. Maybe it's this one right here. Oh, and another one. A really beat up fish. And obviously at his size, he's been around for quite some time. But I wish we could have like the entire head in this screenshot. I don't think he quite moves enough to do that. A five footer. On a jerk beat. Pretty darn cool. I think we'll go ahead and throw him back. And let me just quickly talk about why you'd be able to do that with lighter tackle. In an area like this, there's not really anywhere that he could run to just take all the line off your spool and snap it. So even on really low tension, even if you had this down at like 10 or 15%, you just keep tension on the rod. It's gonna take a lot longer and a lot more patience, but that totally could be done. When they're in areas like this, where there's not just endless water to run to, that's the best way to catch leg legendaries on lighter tackle. So one thing I realized is that either legendaries don't count for the daily and weekly challenges or there's a bug going on with them and I, I do kind of remember that being a thing so I decided to go ahead and target arctic jar looks like we got a decent one on here and depending on what happens with the challenges that might be what we spend a little time targeting so this is just a little six pound bronze and the question is will that actually update our challenges because as I mentioned there's been a bit of a weird thing with them not updating and yeah, so our weeklies don't show that we've caught any fish or any amount of weight. I still think it's a good practice to get into whether or not they are working at the moment, but if we're not going to complete any challenges, we might as well really target big fish today. So we're going to switch it up. We're going to get a slightly larger spoon lure and see if we can maybe pull a big arctic char out of here. So we're going to start with a size 2 spoon. And essentially, what we're doing here by using a larger spoon lure is trading in more catches for, hopefully, chances at larger fish so some of the smaller arctic char in here aren't gonna hit this but if there are better size ones those are the ones that should hit i think that's a big brown trout right at our feet basically managed to hook that guy so quick sidetrack this is back on the size five spoon and i wanted to change location we're having a hard time even landing this guy but that looked like a good one we're right here like at the base of this waterfall and we just cannot get this guy in he's actually Pulling out a little line on us? That's actually going to bring him in. So, that is a 17.8 pound brown trout. And that's on the size 5 spoon. Like, not a bad fish at all. That's probably our biggest brown trout. However, one thing that I wanted to do in essentially trying to target the best fish possible was go to a place where we could catch both Arctic char and brown trout but not have Atlantic Salmon, because the problem with Atlantic Salmon is they get huge, they'll also hit Spoon Lures, and they'll bring you on a lot of very long fights for silver fish. So we're basically going up to where this, we'll say, river runs out of. And we got a nice little bonus there. Ooh, got another one on a size 3 spoon. And that's got us at a standstill as well. Now, I have caught salmon out of these rivers, but I'm not sure there are salmon in here. So we're going to bring the drag way up because we have the equipment to do it. And we'll try to bring whatever this is in. I saw, was that a char? I saw a little bit of reddish color on that. I still can't tell. We have it almost 
into where we can land it? That might be a char. I think that is what we have here. Can we just get it actually in? That is an Arctic char. Not bad. 14 pounder for that. And that's on the size 3 spoon. So you can see, the spoon size doesn't exactly dictate the size of the fish you're going to catch. We caught an almost 18 pound brown trout on a much smaller spoon than that char. By the way, finally that challenge decided to do a little something, which is interesting. However, mainly what using, say, like a size 3 spoon over a size 5 spoon does is it eliminates some of the, like, little 6 pounders, like the first one we caught, from actually chasing it. It's a little bit too big for them. And that's even why I wanted to go with the size 2 spoon. I think with brown trout in here, we will get some hits on it. Ooh, no way. Right out of the river here. I finally gave up on the lake. It just wasn't working. I think that's a brown trout. Definitely not bad. But 13 pounder on the size 2 spoon. So this is where it gets a little bit difficult. Do we just go back to size 3? Because we're catching more fish and ones that are in the same size range anyway. Whatever that was was a big fish. And I expect going down one size, we should be able to hook him. Now we probably shouldn't have cast it from here. Because we definitely could break this off on the rocks. He's chasing it. Is he going to hit it in time? He is. Try to maneuver him down and around a little bit. Just so we can bring him in properly. I think we can land him here. And let's actually see what the size of this guy is. That's way better. A 17 pounder? So I think the size 3 spoon is the way to go. And what I had really planned on doing was hopefully catching one in this size range. And saying something to the effect of... I'd rather go with the size 3 spoon and catch more fish than way less fish, but maybe a little bit bigger. But in our case, I think that was the smallest brown trout we've got so far was on the bigger spoon. So, there's a balance to be had when targeting big fish. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this. And I like what we're doing here with the size 3 spoon a lot more. Now, that might still outdo some of the better ones we've caught today. That looked like a big brown trout. But it's working well enough, and it's still weeding out some of the really small ones. This is an 18 and a half pounder, so it's still our biggest. And the thing about it is, too, even though the main purpose of today was targeting golds, we've only been a couple pounds shy, both with the Arctic Char and the Brown Trout, of getting that done with the size 3 spoon. So I think if we had maybe more patience with it, the size 2 spoon would be a little bit better for that. However, so far, we've got more and better fish with the size 3 spoon and... I find that a little more entertaining than the monotony between bites of a bigger lure. So I think we have a decent thing going here with our size 3 spoon. And at the very least, it's catching us. I don't think we've caught anything under 10 pounds. So double digit weight fish every single time. This has to be an Arctic char. There's nothing else in this water that will hit a spoon lure. And it feels like maybe a decent one to wrap this video up. But if we can actually drag him in here, we'll just bring our drag all the way up to 90%. Should be able to overpower it and pull it in. And maybe, just maybe, we have a chance at one last decent fish. So, still, hard to actually bring him all the way in despite the 90% drag. I think we probably have him here. That is not bad. See if we can kind of pump this in and get it close enough to land him. That should work right there. And as for our last fish, we have a 12 pound silver. So, not quite able to crack that gold marker today, but I think this is going to be the lure that we continue to work with and see if we can maybe pull some gold char and brown trout out of these waters in the future. But we were at least able to get that legendary token in catching Paul the Dominator, and hopefully that information can help you guys in catching him as well. I really wanted to get a gold token or two today, but those tokens, whether it is legendary diamond or gold, are all useful, and at least we managed to get the legendary one, and actually that was the easiest thing we did in the entire video but anyway that i think is going to do it for this video so as always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time